Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to look at the integrator circuit. We can actually build a circuit using an operational amplifier such that the output voltage is equal to the integral of the input voltage. It's kind of interesting. So here we have our original circuit using the operational amplifier where we have a feedback resistor and an input resistor. And we know that in this case, the output voltage will be equal to the negative of the ratio of the feedback resistor to the input resistor times the input voltage. But what happens when we replace the feedback resistor with a capacitor? Remember that in an ideal operational amplifier that the current going into the amplifier here on the input signal can be considered zero and that the voltage from here to there can be considered zero as well because there's no voltage drop across here, at least not in an ideal operational amplifier. So when we replace that resistor with a capacitor, what do we get? Well, to find out how to relate the output voltage to the input voltage, we're going to keep track of the currents. First of all, we have a current from the input voltage to the input signal, and then we have a current from the input signal to the output voltage. And since there's no current flowing in this path, these two currents must be equal to one another. In other words, we can say that I1 is equal to I2. And using Ohm's law, realizing that this must be at zero voltage, and there's the input voltage, we can say that I1 must therefore equal to the ratio of the voltage divided by the resistance. And on the second current right here, from there to there, notice that we are assuming that this is a positive voltage. This is a zero, so in essence the current will flow in the opposite direction, which means that we can write I2 as being equal to minus the capacitance times the rate of change of the output voltage with respect to time. We can now set those two equal to each other, see what we get. Here we get V sub i divided by the resistance is equal to negative capacitance times dV out over dt. So what we need to do now is solve that equation for the output voltage in terms of the input voltage. All right, we can do that by bringing this down here and this up here. So we can write V sub i times dt divided by minus rc is equal to dv output. Turning the equation around, we can write this as dv on the output voltage is equal to minus 1 over rc times V sub i dt. And now we can integrate both sides of the equation. We'll integrate this and we'll integrate it from V output at time equals zero to V output at time equals T. And we're going to integrate this from, uh, let's say, from zero to T. Well, on the left side, what we're going to get here is we're going to get voltage to output at T minus the output voltage at time equals zero, which is equal to minus one over RC times the integral from 0 to t of the input voltage times dt. Now let's assume that the output voltage at time equals 0 is equal to 0. We're going to set that equal to 0. So set v output at time equals 0 equals 0. So this disappears. And essentially we can then write that the output voltage as a function of time is going to be equal to minus 1 over rc times the integral from 0 to t of the input voltage times dt. And that is the solution we were looking for. What this is telling us is that the output voltage is equal to the integral, or proportional, not equal to, because we have the minus 1 over rc there, but that it's proportional to the integral of the input voltage. Wow. So this is what we call the integrator circuit. What about r times c? What is that equal to? Well, it turns out that R times C is simply equal to what we know as the time constant, which tells us how fast the capacitor will be charging. If R is a large number, then of course it will take a long time for the capacitor to charge because the current will be smaller. If the capacitor is a large capacitor, then of course it will take a longer time for it to charge because it has more capacitance. But if you then ignore that for a moment and you simply realize that then the output voltage is simply proportional to the integral of the input voltage, you then realize that this circuit right here is therefore called the integrator circuit because the output voltage is really the proportional to the 
integral of the input voltage. And that's how it's done.